Yeah, hello. This In this video, we're going to look at the inequality for the absolute value of the expected value and show that it's less than or equal to the expected value of the absolute value. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm going to start a series on the characteristic function, the moment generating function, and the factorial moment generating function. And I want to do a few videos to get the background uh, material out of the way so then those videos are, can can flow more efficiently. So here um, we're going to assume that our PDF is, is uh, positive or zero which is a very safe assumption here um, and we're going to create two little sub functions. Um, F1 is going to be where this piece is positive and zero otherwise and F2 is going to it's going to be the negative of that when it's negative. So both of these functions are positive functions. They're above zero. Okay. Now when we define them like this, then that means that if we take x times f of x, it can be written like this. Remember when this has value, so when, when we're positive, you know this, this one's zero. And when this one is zero, this one has value. But since we're forcing F2 to always be positive, then this function can be rewritten as this difference. And then another property is if we take the absolute value of this, then it's equivalent to just the addition of these two functions because it just forces everything to be up top. And remember, yeah, so then if we look at the expected value of x which can be rewritten like this but then this is the these the difference of these two functions it can be rewritten like this okay so now if we look at the absolute value of x that is uh that is this you stick an absolute value of x in here and then you integrate but since f of x is always positive, you can put absolute values around the whole thing. And then we showed here that it can be written as that sum, so it can be written as this. It's the addition of those two. Well, thus, the absolute value of expected value of x is this, which then this is the subtraction of these two quantities and then the um, there's an absolute value identity that if you have two numbers here it's always less than or equal to you know the absolute value when you add them and so this is something that I did I'm not proven now but I think that it's been shown or seen enough that you can assume that this is true and it is true but now if we look at the um, absolute value of each of these. Now these are all positive functions and so um, these are always positive functions so we can just take away the absolute value of these. But when then we're this sum we can take it into one sum and integrate but this here we determined was the absolute value of these of this but since f of x is always positive, you know, you can take the absolute value of the product of the absolute values. But then that's always positive, so we can take them away and we get this. But this is the expected value of the absolute value of x. So we've just shown that this quantity is less than or equal to this quantity. And that's what we wanted to show. And we're going to use that when we show that the characteristic function is bounded. So... Oh, and maybe one other note is I used x in here, but it could really be a function of x. So expect the value of g of x, and then it, you can use the same argument to show that, that it expect by the absolute value of g of x. Well, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.